Welcome to Active Classroom. Now we're going to focus on reviewing and grading student work. So, so far, you've went from searching and finding activities to assigning those activities. Now it's time to review and grade that student work. Let's get started. Again, we're going to start on our homepage with assignments and grades, assignments and grades. And here under assignments and grades, we're under what's called manage the assignments. And as you can see, we have a list of assignments and due dates of when they were due to come in. For this particular activity, we can search through a variety of ways. We can search by class, which is one of the ways I do suggest using it. We can search by groups, which we haven't talked about groups yet, but you can set up groups that are below grade level learners, on grade level, above grade level, special education. You can create groups for a variety of reasons. We'll have to talk about that in another session. You can look at things such as status. Was it locked, unlocked? What's the due date? You can also search by things such as date as to when it was due, the date it was unlocked, or the date it was created. There are lots of ways to filter through and find what you're looking for in your Manage Assignments Activities bar, including starting with a calendar. I'm going to start by searching just this first activity that comes up. We see that our first button is launch and the next button is grade. We're going to start with scrolling down to the one that we want to use today is going to be debating the documents, the new deal, did it work? And we're going to click our launch button for that activity. And it brings us to the student interface. Now you can see here, right now we don't have a student selected. So we're not really seeing anything. So we have to choose a student. When we click on student, we get a drop down menu of where we want to begin. We're going to start with student one. Okay, so student one has turned in their work. This is their introductory essay. And these are the things that the student has highlighted and the annotations that have been made based on those highlights. As the teacher, we're now working with a paperless classroom. I can now receive electronic work from the students and return it digitally or electronically as well. I'm going to click on the phrase here. The student's really not trying to do the work. They're really just giving me some highlighting to play around with. So I'm going to click on this orange highlighting and see that it is reflecting the main idea of the passage. When I click on that orange highlighting, it opens and shows me what the student highlighted and it showed me, <clears throat> excuse me, what the student said it was that was supporting evidence. I think I said main idea a moment ago, my apology, supporting evidence. And now I can add a comment back to the student as to what I think about the work that they just completed. So here you can now see that I've added to this supporting evidence because there's a bell next to it. When the student looks at their work and they see the bell next to it, they automatically know that the teacher has made a comment on their work. Just as if I were handing it back to them in person, the student knows to look at my comments. So the student will notice the bell and look at the comments on their work. So that was our launch button where we looked at the actual student work. Now, let's look at the grade. How do we grade the student work? Okay, interesting place to begin, right? We're starting here and it says student 30. And so far, the score is a zero out of 27. Now, there's a number of things that we can do here. First of all, I'm going to filter this down and go just to one class at a time. Otherwise, all of your students are listed in alphabetical order. Now that may be perfectly fine with you. It doesn't matter either way you want to grade students. All of them listed alphabetically or one class at a time. Either way works. So I'm going to select my demo class and the student with which I want to begin. Here I see that student one 
is the only one who has turned in the assignment so far. Now, if the other students had turned it in, I would see green tags next to them, unless they were late. So a student can turn in late work, but it will be a red tag so that you know the work was turned in after the deadline. That's very helpful, right? Okay, so we're starting with student one, my demo class, and now we want to get to this grading to see what we can do instead of this zero out of 27. You'll see that the point value automatically defaults to one point for every question. So what I suggest is when you see a question that you think is valued at more than one point, that you choose the value you think is appropriate. So here, I've changed this one to five, 10, and 10, because I think that those level questions deserve more than one point. So you can determine whatever you want that point value to be and set it for yourself. Now, once I've set this point value for a student, it now applies to every student. So I don't have to go in and redo it every time. You just have to do it the first time when you want that point value to be greater than one. Now you can see what I'm doing is I'm actually grading the work, correct, partially correct, correct, or I could have marked incorrect. Now my student has a grade of 20 out of 25, but a score of 20 out of 49. How did that happen? Well, it happened because to begin with, there were more questions than I actually wanted to grade. So the number of points I wanted to award was 25. So I graded my work out of the 25 points and I didn't worry about the other 24 points. Now I'm going to go to Gradebook and I should see the 20 out of 25 reflected in my Gradebook. <clears throat> okay, here's my Gradebook. This is the assignment we just completed. And here is student one. And over here is the grade for student one. Notice my red tab here. That red tab tells me that my student has not yet received their work. So I have to click on that tab and say publish grades in order for my student to receive their work. All right, people, it's your turn now. I wanna see you get out there and practice with your grading. If you have any questions or you need any help, don't forget you can always go to the question mark at the top of our page and contact our customer service department or find the answer yourself within our welcome guide and our many different short videos, most of which are two minutes and less. I hope that you love using Active Classroom as I've really enjoyed sharing this aspect of it with you.